I'm very happy to be here today and share with you um, at this year's expo. This beautiful female cotton top tamarind is called Tamarind. Tamarind was the first cotton top tamarind I ever met in the wild. This was about 18 years ago. Um, I was still zoo director in my home, hometown here in Barranquilla. And I had just learned about cotton top tamarinds and about the work of Proyecto de Tea. So I wanted to go and see them in the wild. That's when I met uh, Soto and Felix. Back then, it was only the two of them. And their job was to go into the forest every day and monitor and study and take notes about Tamara's family and a few other cotton top tamarind family groups that live in this beautiful forest. I thought it was great to go into the forest with them because I could listen to all of the stories. And they said it's basically like a soap opera every day kind of following them, what they do, what happens within the family, who gets pregnant and so on. So I enjoyed very much interacting with them. And I was amazed to, to learn how tough a female cut up needs to be. She is the boss in the family group. And she is the one that makes the very important decisions for her family, where to sleep at night, uh, where to rest, where to find food, Basically, she's in charge of making sure that her family is safe and, um, and healthy as well. So I thought, wow, no wonder she needs to be tough. And she was, in fact, a very tough cut and tough tamarind. To me, it was amazing also to see them all hang out together in, in, as a family and so similar to us humans. You know, a, they you know, interact with each other, play with each other, change roles in helping care for the babies, um, making sure there's no predators around, uh, just taking a, a slow down from the heat and the temperature, getting some rest, playing a little. It's actually a fun uh, cut and top life. <laughs> scratch your head or scratch somebody else's in your family. And of course, teach your little uh, siblings how to get by in the forest. They actually also have a very sophisticated communication system, it's like a language, which they use to um, interact with each other. But one of the most uh, amazing things that I learned that day was why cotton tops are so important for the forest. And it turns out they uh, eat, they feed from fruits that grow in the trees in, in their forest. And actually, it's, uh, they feed from more than 60 different trees. So all of those little fruits they eat, they swallow completely, and, and then they poop when they move around the forest. And when they do that, they plant many, many trees because those seeds come out ready to germinate. So it kind of helps the forest uh, stay renewed, stay healthy, and keep growing all the time. I, I thought that was, that, was, that was very interesting. Actually, for a, for a while, we studied the poop in cotton tops. That's how we knew which seeds they were uh, actually eating from, from the forest. But to see them, you know, do have such an important role within their ecosystem to protect their habitat, I thought it was re really great. They are very important to protecting the tropical dry forest that where they live in northern Colombia. A really beautiful ecosystem that is lush and green during the rainy season, but then it turns like a dead forest during the dry season. Lots of the trees drop their leaves so they can save water and energy, and then it looks like a dead forest. But fortunately, cotton tops and all the other wildlife species that live in this forest are they're very well adapted to these drastic changes and they get by during the dry season and the rainy season. But I think the most uh, impacting uh, aspect that I learned that day that I visited um, the forest is that cotton top tamarinds are only found in that little red dot in our planet. Nowhere else in the world, just the country of Colombia and not even in the whole country. Just that little black spot that you see on the map, that's it. 
that's the only place on earth you will see cotton fog tamarins in the wild. Wow, that, that, you know, that made me feel really proud because this is the place where I am from. These are my monkeys, this is my country. But uh, never hearing from them as I grew up, I thought that was, that, that didn't make any sense. So that made me feel responsible as well to do something about it and to spread the word about this amazing species. Especially because, unfortunately, their beautiful forest is facing quite a few challenges. It's disappearing, or it has been disappearing very fast due to mostly agriculture, cattle ranching. You see this slash and burn that wipes off many uh, hectares of forest every year. And then or something else that happens when you wipe off these chunks of forest is that something we call fragmentation, which is basically whatever is left is left as islands that are isolated from each other. And you have this big voids in between forest islands. And for species like cotton tops that hang out always on top of the trees, this is a huge problem. So they get isolated in these forest bubbles and they are limited to find resources, to find food. Um, if they come out of their forest, which they never do because they never come down to the ground, they are exposed to predators if they do. But also it puts at risk his genetic viability in the long term. It's like if we were isolated in an island for a very long time and don't have other uh, of our own species to mix and secure our long-term survival and genetic health. So this is a huge problem cotton tops are facing. And then on top of that, of you know, the, the issues with deforestation, we have the illegal pet trade. Like I didn't know, many people in, in our country don't know about cotton top tamers or didn't know about cotton tops. And there's such a cute one pound monkey with a you know, beautiful crazy hair. And, and people think it's cool to have it as a pet. So that's another, aspect that is threatening cotton tops quite a bit. So deforestation and the illegal pet trade have put cotton top tamarins in, in a very uh, harsh position. And now they are considered a critically endangered species. That is, they are one step uh, from being extinct in the wild. We estimate there is about 7,000 cotton top tamarins left in the wild, but only in 2% of their forest that is left. And that 2% is made out of clusters of bubbles of forest that are isolated um, from each other. So science has been a big part of Project OTT. We have learned a lot. We have uh, shared this knowledge and we have used this knowledge to promote the conservation of cotton top tamarins. But we know science alone is not enough to save the species. So we have involved local communities in our conservation work we have uh, put together these cool community projects uh, and, and made these ladies uh, smile. They make these beautiful plush cotton top tamarins in all sizes and shapes. Um, and then our artisans that make the beautiful eco mochilas made with recycled plastic bags. All those products generate an income for their families in that way they don't have to rely fully on uh, the resources of the forest or use hunt animals or cut trees to make a living for them and for their families. And we also reach out to the younger, uh, the younger ones in the communities with our education programs. And it's usually 1,600 kids every year that learn about cotton tops, learn about why you should not have a cotton top as a pet, and go to the forest and see the monkeys in the wild. And then you know, we help them become leaders uh, and great ambassadors of our conservation work. But the truth is, if we want to save these species, we need to save their forest. The forest is the main reason why they are critically endangered. And over the last few years, we have fought quite a few battles um, to save whatever's left of the forest that is home to cotton top tamarins. Actually, one of our ferocious battles uh, was uh, against an airport, an international airport that was going to be built on top of this beautiful forest that you see in the image. And actually we won that battle, 
and I actually got the title of Cotton Top Warrior Princess back then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got that out of the way. This is a very dear friend of mine, and you might be wondering what kind of friends I have, right, that make these beautiful <laughs> jokes. But it was great. It was a great battle, and that got us energized to keep going and to create partnerships that help us protect this forest. And today, we have been able to secure 13,000 acres of uh, forest in public protected areas, working with the environmental authorities. And we also have bought land ourselves to create uh, private protected areas. And in a big part, thanks to WCN, we have been able to secure 650 acres uh, of forest that uh, is home to cotton top tamarins. But these protected areas are still bubbles of forests that need to be connected so that cotton tops can move freely around, as well as other wildlife that needs this connectivity. And around these protected areas, we still have small villages and communities with people that rely or depend on forest resources, mostly small farmers that cut the big trees, which are actually the trees that are um, shelter for cotton tops at night to stay safe from predators um, and for food as well, or smaller trees that they cut for fences, for firewood in some of the communities that don't have access to natural gas, or also for construction. So in order to, to uh, address this issue, we reached out to people like Salvador and Rafael. Um, they were both uh, victims of the decades of violence that went on in the rural areas of Colombia because of illegally armed groups. Uh, thankfully, our government signed the peace process with these groups about five years ago. And Salvador and Rafael were able to go back to their land as they had been displaced when they were kids. And they were happy to be back to their land, but when they came back, they didn't have any money to invest or uh, to plant uh, trees or to you know, make it productive. Um, so we joined a, a partnership of organizations that offered people like Salvador and Rafael to sign a conservation agreement. And so and in this conservation agreement, we told them, okay, how about if you set aside uh, part of your land so that we can create forest corridors? So kind of like forest bridges between isolated bubbles of forest, right? And within those yellow lines, we could connect from one property to the other and create a continuous habitat that cotton tops could use, right? So you would set aside about 10% of your land. And in turn, we will help you with um, training, with uh, supplies, with trees, with seeds, equipment, and everything you need to make your land productive. Uh, and all of those, um, opportunities we offered were using environmentally friendly practices, uh, nothing like flash, flash and burn or any pesticides or any chemicals. So these guys have been learning how to harvest honey or they have been planting fruit trees, um, such as lemon, mangoes, papayas, just these amazing tropical fruits. And also the usual yami, yuca and corn, uh, also poultry. So they get a lot of different opportunities to uh, feed their families from working their land and also some excess uh, products that they can sell and generate an income. So today we have uh, gotten involved at least 150 families like Salvador and Rafael in these um, agreements and they're working great. Uh, they're complying to their commitment and on our end, then we are working in filling out those yellow lines with trees. And since we studied cotton tops for a long time, we know what trees we need to plant so that cotton tops can have food and shelter, as well as all the wildlife that lives in this forest. So we established a nursery and started planting little trees, little tree saplings. And that's how we met Luis. And Luis was fixing the fence on our nursery, and he heard our team chatting about uh, the trees and the seeds and the planting of the saplings. And he couldn't hold it himself. And he approached our team and said, hey, you know, I know a lot about these trees. Turns out that Luis uh, had been a logger from an early age, illegal logger. 
um, his high school sweetheart got pregnant when he was 16 and he had to find a job. And he had been doing this for 20 years, so he had a lot of experience knowing about uh, all the trees that are part of the tropical dry forest. And we took a chance with Luis and invited him to be a part of our team. And we're so happy that he's become one of the key staff in our restoration team. And now instead of cutting trees and getting in trouble with the authorities, he can help us grow trees, find the seeds, propagate them, plant them and care for them. So instead of cutting trees, now Luis is planting trees and caring for the forest that is home to cotton top tamarinds. This is the kind of impact we're trying to instill in the community with Salvador and Rafael and with our staff, which by the way, it's 90% from the local communities. We, that is another way we provide um, opportunities to uh, make a better living, have a stable job, help care for the, for the forest, and um, also get their families involved and committed to the conservation of, of the habitat that is home to cotton top tamarinds. So we're proud that we're not only offering benefits to the farmers, but also to our staff that is from the local communities. So we grow this, um, with these uh, saplings from seeds we collect from the trees. We care for them in the nursery. And then when the rains come, we go and work with Salvador, Rafael, and the small farmers to plant those trees in the corridors. And we also hire local transportation services. Uh, some of these corridors are in areas that are not accessible by anything else but Little Boer Road. So we also hire local uh, farmers to help us with transportation. That is another way we get them involved in working in um, the planting of, of the trees in the corridors. So to date, we have been able to begin restoration of at least 500 acres of uh, forest corridors in this region. This is Salvador showing his, uh, proudly showing his uh, trees growing in his corridor. And we have planted more than 100,000 trees um, in the last three years that we have been working to create these forest uh, corridors. It's basically like a spider web of corridors that connect very important protected areas or forest areas. Then that's not the end of it. Once we plant the trees, we have to send our team the year after to make sure those trees are doing okay. Uh, you can see we mark them with little tags and we find them with our GPS and you kind of monitor their survival and uh, their growth. And this is something very important because you know, we're actually being pioneers in, in tropical dry forest restoration. There's not too much information about it, uh, hasn't been done that much. So we are being very careful in documenting everything so that this knowledge can also help other organizations that want to join protecting the forest for cotton top tamarinds and ourselves in improving our process and, and as we grow to expand our conservation, uh, forest conservation work. And we not only monitor the growth of the trees, we all also monitor compliance to the conservation agreements. And this is a, a beautiful story I wanna share with you because Mr. Barrios is one of the farmers that is involved in, in the conservation agreements. And uh, one day he was walking by his property and he rescued this little baby girl cotton top that had just fallen from, from a tree. We estimated it's about four months, which is about the time they start being independent. And on some other occasion, probably, uh, Mr. Vazes would have either kept it as a pet or given it away, or even worse, sold it in the pet trade. But he acquired a commitment by signing the conservation agreement, so he called us. And together, we were able to return the baby back to her family. And the way we do this is playing, remember I mentioned those vocalizations or that language they uh, used to communicate. And I'm gonna show you one of those. So that is what we call a long call, which is, uh, 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 it is a, a, um, a call they make when they wanna show territoriality. 
So we were able to return the little baby girl to her family. The family, when they heard the vocalizations, they came and pick, picked her up. And we were so very proud because that is exactly the type of impact we want to create in farmers and their families. It's not only their benefits they receive from this conservation agreements, but their commitment to protecting cotton top tamarinds and to working together to protect wildlife. And the thing is that these forests that we are building, restoring and protecting for cotton top tamarinds are not only benefiting cotton tops, many other species grow in this beautiful, amazing place that benefit from our conservation efforts. And not only, not only the animals, but also the people. And through our education programs, we, tell, we teach kids how important it is to save the forest because the forests are the sponges that save water for us, especially in the dry season where people in the communities struggle very much for not having water. So forest, it's the safest water for us and it creates a better climate and it's, a, it's basically a, a, all resources if we use them sustainably. So what is good for cotton tops is good for many other animals and is good for us people. And we work very hard to make those connections in all of our programs through our field research, through our education programs, through our community programs, and through our forest restoration programs. We really want to make sure that our efforts uh, reach or achieve that connection between people and their surrounding environment and that commitment from people in our communities with cotton top tamarind conservation. Even though we have accomplished quite a bit today, the road ahead of us is long and we do have a vision over the next three years that we wanna be able to create at least uh, 200 acres of forest corridors, plant 100,000 more trees, uh, protect more forest and get at least 100 more families involved joining us to protect this beautiful ecosystem and protect the cotton tops that live in it. So we need your help, we can do this alone. So we hope to um, motivate you to give us a hand and keep going with this um, mission we have to protect the beautiful tropical dry forest of Northern Colombia. We also wanna invite you to shop at our website <laughs> because we want to help the communities, the ladies, the artisans that make these beautiful cotton tops. They have had a tough year as probably most of us or at least many of us. And we want to make sure they have a pleasant Christmas. So shop their products, decorate your Christmas tree with these beautiful TT Noels and help communities have um, just a smooth Christmas to kind of soothe for the tough year we've all had. I want to acknowledge our team, the people that we share the mission with, the people that every day share the passion and the commitment to protect the forest that is home to cut and tough tamarinds. It's not Soto and Felix only anymore. We are a big crowd now that work every day to protect the cutest monkey in the world the cotton top tamarins. Thank you very much.